Good afternoon, everybody. Brett here with Double Shots. I want to thank Double Shots for allowing me to do another video. Uh, we've been talking about streaming this week and cutting the cord, getting away, away from uh, cable wires and everything. So today we are going to do an unboxing, hooking up an Apple TV uh, device. I'll go ahead and explain a little, a little bit more about that. First and foremost, I was not given a promotion, given a conjunction, discount, anything for doing this review. I'm doing it independently on my own. Uh, and let's go ahead and start while I am saying everything. Now this Apple TV 4K is exactly what it is. Uh, it is a streaming device. I'll go ahead and open it here for you guys. And it consists of this, which is pretty much your, mod your brain module, your remote. It gives you a charging cable. Now you're going to, you're going to wonder why they're putting that in here. This is required to hook in via here to charge. So you can use this USB to, and then you're going to get your power cable in addition for everything. So one of the things I actually like number one about the Apple TV devices is uh, the provider that I actually use, uh, they are starting to do this instead of traditional cable boxes. Now, keep in mind you are streaming content and compared to a coaxial cable or fiber cable going to produce that signal for you. So, I'm not using, there's no inputs for, if you look at this, there are no inputs directly for... coax hookup. Now you have your hookup as we unbox this. We have your power, your HDMI 2.0 port, and then this is for your Ethernet. So if you uh, if you're gonna hook it up uh, with the Ethernet cable or you have the uh, or you have the uh, option to do it wireless. Me myself and I I like the wireless option. Now keep in mind you're gonna probably get better speed off of the uh, Ethernet portion. So you do have to have a uh, internet connection to be able to go ahead and do that, but there's plenty of streaming content you can buy, uh, buy purchase, and there's plenty of free content that you can get uh, and you can put on to this device as well too. But what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how to hook it up and go from there. So. Let me give you some specs. They have a 32 gig version and a 64 gig version. This is actually the 32 gig version. It's got an internal flash memory. Uh, the nice thing about it is it's a 64 bit quad core A10 Fusion processor. And you can find some of those in the iPad Pro models uh, used in that, the A10. It's got Bluetooth 5.0, it's got gigabit Ethernet. It's, in an 802.11 AC wireless. So those are some of the specs with it. Overall, it's a very solid unit. Now, you see the thing for 4K as well in addition. Now, this is just a regular standard HD TV, so it's not gonna have anything coming through 4K. Uh, you have to have a 4K TV first and foremost to be able to have 4K content, HDR. Uh, this will just produce an HDMI uh, high def quality. Uh, so this will just do high def, it won't do 4K, so you can disregard that. However, this has the option, if I was to get a different television set, I would go ahead and be able to use that and go from there. Uh, but anyway, also, you also, the content also has to be available in 4K. With it being a streaming device, the biggest thing is you want to make sure that your uh, provider uh, you have an ample bandwidth because streaming services require uh, bandwidth to be able to use to provide that content. So let's go ahead and start with everything first and foremost. You're going to want to make sure your TV is not on. I usually like to do that. Then what I want to do is I want to take this out of the box for wrapping HDMI cable. I like to go ahead and hook. that up. And what you do, you're, what you're going to do here 
You're gonna hook it in from there. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna hook it into your HDMI port. Uh, depending on your TV, you could have anywhere, some one to three. You're gonna find the HDMI port on the back of the television. I found it. We're gonna hook it in. Then after that, here's your power cable. What you're going to do is you're going to hook that from the power side. And what I like to do is I like to plug my cords, anything electronic, I like it to go to a good surge protector or battery backup. It's an investment. So I always recommend to plug it into something to cover from surges or any of that nature. Knock on wood, I've never had a surge. But it's always good to protect your investment with anything you purchase. And then what you want to be able to do, let me move this out of the way, actually, sorry. You're going to have all these cables here. But then it's going to power on. You can see right there, that blue button, or that blue light, or white light, whatever you want to consider color-wise. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go up to your TV. And is it on HDMI 1 for this? Or is it on HDMI 2, the second one? Then, here's my remote. What you're going to do, you have your remote. We're going to get it in. You're going to wait for your... These are all the languages you can program this in. And usually what would happen, there would be a little HDR. If this was a uh, 4K device, there would be an HDR that would be up there to show you that. Now you're, what you're going to do is, these are all the languages you can have it go through. Of course, we're here in the United States. So, me, English, you're going to press on that. Country of you region. It's going to have you data and privacy. The icon appears when Apple or feature is or a feature is asking to use your personal information. You have to do that. You can have the option to use Surrey or don't use Surrey. Setting up, set up with device. So now you can actually the cool thing about this is you can set it up if you have an Apple device like I do. You can set it up with your uh, device or you have the option to set it up manually. So with me having an Apple device, I'm going to actually opt to do this setup with a device. So now what I have to do is I have to unlock and see how it says right here. It says set up new Apple TV. So I have to make sure my Bluetooth is on, which Bluetooth is. Now I need to go back here. You do this. So unlock your iPad. I might have just, I think I backed out of it. And you'll want to wait for that to go ahead and there you go. You want to make sure that device is up and it's going to set it up automatically. 
So that's the cool thing. And then what's going to happen is it's going to give you if you're setting it up through an iPad, you're going to this. Uh, it's going to give you a code that you have to enter. So I have to enter that code in, and then it's going to set it up. So I virtually don't have to go in here. It will put features onto it that we're going through. Uh, and if you're doing it manually, if you're doing it on the manual way, you're going to have to set up your username uh, that you have for your iCloud account. You're going to have to set up your, uh, pass your, your password that you use with your iCloud account and go from there. But as you can take a look at it, it is setting up, but you're going to want to make sure your Bluetooth is on, on the iPad and it will do everything. It will, it's setting up the iCloud right now. I'll show you that right there. It says setting up iCloud. And it's kind of a nifty feature. Now, another thing, if you have children or if you accidentally purchase things or anything of that nature, you have the option with your account to go ahead and require a password if you're going to make a purchase. After making a purchase, it will have, this has our iCloud account onto it, but it will ask if you always require, require after 15 minutes, or never require. So use your judgment, uh, purchases, if you have a card on file, to make sure to save you from me, I always require it. Now, here you see, this is actually my provider right here. So keeps your app uh, one home screen on every Apple TV. I don't want to do that right now. This one is actually what room would I consider this as? Guest room, home theater, living room. I would say this is my living room. And me, I like the location services on. Uh, see the world. I like to have... I like to share with, and then you have to agree to the terms and conditions, and there you go. We're going to pause this, though, quickly, because I have to sign in with my Apple ID. So it's important that you remember your Apple ID, so that way you can sign into this. Continue. Welcome back. I'm done doing that. So pretty much now what will happen is it will automatically download the Spectrum app, for me because that is actually who I use for my provider everybody because they are my local area uh, just a thing for the St. my St. Louis market where I live we have a choice between Spectrum we have a choice between uh, AT&T Dish Network and DirecTV now another cool thing is again now if this was a 4K TV there would be a little thing that would have showed up that said HDR for 4K Another nice thing that it does as far as on things is it gives you a little menu here. So I can select, if I use my iPad, I can select which room I want to toggle through that's connected. And I can actually play, I can use my iPad as a center console to go ahead and go to access all my devices. But pretty much then, uh, you, here's your app store. You have your movies, iTunes. You have your TV shows. You can search. You can actually sync stuff up for if you have computers available. It will give you a little code what you can do, but right now I do not have any sharing available. You can sign up with iTunes. Uh, you can get that. You have your arcade games. Then another cool thing as far as off of it. You have movies you can get. TV shows. This is Apple's. Then you can have your channels you want, like Apple TV+. Plus. So there's a lot of there's a lot of content that you can actually get from them. Uh, playoffs, MLB TV. One of the things I want to go ahead and show you guys. These are shows that movies you can watch. So like for example, let's say I want to watch not that. That's below deck Mediterranean. Uh, Friends. It will show you what the price is. It will take it a minute or two. Play first episode. Here you go. That's through Spectrum TV. You can actually play that first episode right there. Fargo. If I want to watch Fargo, Spectrum TV. 
I can play that. So that's kind of cool. What you can what you can do there. And then if I want to go ahead and log in to my account to where I can watch TV, it's going to take a little bit because it has to sync with my network and everything for my provider it would automatically do. But it would allow you to be able to watch. And I could use Siri or I could go ahead and do something else. But there I am. I'm actually watching TV content from my provider as we speak live, which is really, really cool. But here's one thing I want to go ahead and show everybody what I like to do. I like to put some gadgets onto my onto my device. Uh, I don't want any of that. But one thing I like to do, this is, for example, I have Amazon Prime. So what I want to do, I can put Amazon Prime on here. And then that will show how fast it's actually loading, downloading. So you can put stuff that you already have. And keep in mind, uh, a lot of the stuff, it, it, uh, there's always so much to streaming content. There is stuff that you have to pay for and go from there. Not everything is free. So that is one thing with streaming, just because it says, oh, you can stream this channel or this channel. Some of the stuff you have to pop buy. So, for example, Netflix, you still have to buy that. But if I want to put Facebook on here, I could put Facebook on here, even though I don't want it on here. Then uh, let me go to this. One thing I like to do. On all my devices, you can have Spotify, Yahoo Sports. I like to always put Speed Pet on my Apple devices just to see what it pulls. Just to see what this will actually pull here. And you see it's actually downloading pretty fast. And I'll go ahead and I'll show you a Speed Test. So now I can, make, I can back out. I can go down here. I'll show you a Speed Test. And you have to allow. <laughs> this unit here alone is pulling a whopping 32, 34. It's not bad. It's what this is pulling here. It is not. And keep in mind, the more streaming devices you actually have, the less bandwidth you're going to have. So there you go. That's set up. And I did that again from the manual side or, or, or the automatic side. So if you had an Apple, if you don't have an Apple uh, iPad that you don't want to sync it through that way, you would just be entering in your account, information, your email for your Apple ID, and then your passcode for that. So, and then the thing is, your apps, like your, for example, if you're Netflix or Hulu, you would still have to enter those passwords. You would still have to enter that in. It just makes getting everything set up easier. And I want to tell you, I think I know the reason why our network is showing that slow. But now we're in there. And then another thing that you can control, look at this. My device, it automatically configured itself to where I can go ahead and control the volume of of my TV. So it configured it automatically to be able to control that. But I still like to independently use uh, uh, the other remote my television itself. I hope this was very beneficial to people. Uh, again, they're very, very good devices. I like them. I have no problem with them. Uh, I think they work really, really good. Uh, I, I own a couple of them myself. Uh, I've actually had this unit for a while. I just did not unbox it yet until now because I wanted to do this video. Again, I want to thank Double Shots. And then it, the, before I go, your remote the battery life on it is really, really good. Um, uh, it, it will show a little icon up here when it's ready to charge. And then all you have to do is bring it over, hook it into something USB. You could even use 
uh, your Apple, your iPad, your your the charger extension that goes this goes into the USB extension and to plug it in and it charges right up. So I hope this was ven very beneficial to somebody that is uh, getting an Apple TV. I would recommend them. They're one of the great devices that you can use to stream content. Again, remember, you must have subscriptions with them in addition. There is free content, but there is a lot of paid content in addition, too. Uh, we'll be doing a Roku one here probably here in the next week or so. I'll be doing one of those, too. Uh, but, yeah, uh, it's a great little solid device that allows you to be able to access your Internet. For me, it allows me to be able to access my cable service provider and go from there, which is awesome. And I don't have to worry about drilling holes. And all that I have is the HDMI cords that are hanging on. Now, keep in mind, network signal, signal range is all going to depend. Network speed and everything from your provider with streaming services. So you're, you're going to want to make sure you have an ample bandwidth. My net, oh, with how I have mine actually designed is it provides so much bandwidth per unit. So that way each... Uh, so let's say somebody's gaming, it prioritizes the gaming, so that way there's a dedicated bandwidth to each and every uh, TV or every device that I have here. But again, I hope this is beneficial. I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of your day.